The Dolphins are, of course, they were active uh, leading up to the trade deadline, which is today at 4 p.m. Eastern. Let's welcome in our guy, Mike Garofolo. He's in New Jersey this morning. Uh, 4 p.m. Eastern is the time. Anybody that we should have our eyes on throughout the day? Yeah, okay, a bunch of people. I'm watching a couple of cornerbacks. Let's start with Darius Slay with the Detroit Lions. I know there was some mention yesterday that the Philadelphia Eagles potentially in play for Slay, but the asking price for Slay, I am told, remains incredibly high. And if Howie Roseman didn't pay big for Jalen Ramsey, and he did make a, a sizable offer, just not big enough uh, to complete the trade, I just don't see him going to those kinds of levels for Darius Slay. So uh, I'm going to say that Slay remains a Detroit Lion beyond today. One other cornerback that's been mentioned, Janoris Jenkins with the New York Giants. Um, as of yesterday, and I know that there was a tweet from Jenkins that made people think that something had happened. He said something like, life is great. Uh, as of yesterday, there was really nothing bubbling with Jenkins. So for something to happen, it's going to have to happen quickly to get done before 4 p.m. I know people have mentioned he played with uh, for Steve Spagnuolo, now the uh, defensive coordinator in Kansas City where they need corners. I just haven't heard anything to that end happening. So I, I think as of right now, I could see Jenkins remaining a giant and joining Leonard. Leonard Williams, the new addition to that def to that defense. Maybe life is just great. It was a beautiful day weather-wise here on the East Coast yesterday. Maybe that's all. Sometimes Jeff life is, is just about. great. Yeah. Yeah. We appreciate you being here with us on the show on this October 29th. That trade deadline again at 4 p.m. Eastern. If there's anything breaking, you'll hit us up with what is going on around the league back here at the breakfast table. How's your cell phone this morning? It's good, and I think we've seen the two biggest moves when you saw Ramsey and Sanders. I don't think there's going to be a monster one. I'm okay. curious to see what happens with Trent Williams. Darius Slay, like Mike said, I'm saying it's hearing the same thing. What makes Slay so desirable is that not only is he this great player, he only makes $10 million. Of course, that's relative. Only makes. Some of these corners are making 15 16 so it becomes an affordable asset if you're willing to trade for him. Teams I would look for, the top of the NFC, looking for one more piece. Mm. Are the Packers going to get Aaron Rodgers, one more wide receiver? Are the Saints going to get Drew Brees, one more wide receiver? And are the Carolina Panthers going to try to make a move to help their team? I'm very curious to see what we see on the NFC side of things and if one of those teams is going to make a move. Of course, the Patriots are always listening. They might not be right line up. They're always listening to see if they can get Tom Brady one more piece. Do you, would you expect them to, or is that just like a granted thing that everybody thinks the Patriots are going to make? No, I, I, there are a couple tight ends that are not your top-tier ah. tight ends that I think would help the Patriots. Mm. If there is a, a smart move, they're not going to mortgage their future for one, but you start hearing names like Tyler Eifert out in Cincinnati and oh, some yeah. of those guys that maybe aren't the top-tier tight end but are guys that could immediately help a team. Potentially that could be a landing spot for those Trent guys. Trent Williams, where would you guys want him to go? We're here. I've heard some things about the Browns being a good fit. Of course, New England would it make sense. I don't know if it makes sense cap-wise. My eyes always go to the front runners. I, like, I, I'm not that interested in the three and six teams who are trying to get better. I, I like the names you're mentioning. So if it's Trent Williams or it's somebody else, Peter, I know you don't just talk out of your backside. I know this comes from a place. You said... Aaron Rodgers and a wide receiver, as well as he's playing as on fire, you think they may bring sand to the beach? Historically, they're not a team that does yeah. a lot of action. But things but have changed. Got a new general manager in his second year, and this is just around the league. So it doesn't come from the Packers. It's just, hey, there may be one more piece away from being able to compete with the Saints or the 49ers. Even. Like, if there wasn't a – like, I look at Robbie Anderson for the Jets. Uh -huh. If he's on the trade block – We like, heard that, yeah. If you're the Packers or if you're the 49ers and it's a low – it's a third or fourth round pick, like – why not? Uh -huh. Let's see. The guy can run, run for days. There are a lot of those type of players that might be available for a lot cheaper than what we thought they would be available for at the start of the season. And mention to Robbie Anderson, him being banged up, and the guys like Eifert who had history of being injured, A.J. Green, um, Ooh, AJ Keenan Green. Allen. Like, I've always been curious, you know, how willing are teams to reach out to players who have historically been banged up, but we know, if healthy, can be tremendous talent on a good team. You know, is, there, is there a chance for – uh, Keenan Allen or A.J. Green. I know we did the trade bot earlier. Stars. But A.J. Green, his name just keeps popping up in my head every time around this. Uh, uh, this well, what time are you going to get? Because A.J. Green is in the final year of a contract, mm -hmm. so you're really getting eight games out of him and then the playoffs. Yeah. So are you going to mortgage the future for him? Because he's also coming off that bad foot injury. Yeah. So it's a curious dilemma. And Cincinnati, historically, Geno Atkins, A.J. Green, like, nope, not tradable. Right, just you're just ours. stubborn. Yeah, you're it's ours. ours. Like, that's what it is. The Keenan Allen thing is interesting because you see guys like the, the Chargers, you say, okay, well, there's a team that's sinking. They just fired their offensive coordinator. And yet that's they have a Mike Williams behind them. Who's that's a cornerstone, though. Right. That's their guy. Like, Keenan Allen is one of theirs. They drafted him, and he's been there. With that said, if he has one year left, are they going to break him off and give him 
13 million dollars a year I don't at this age they've got his injuries. But if they get him away they're saying they're done winning and Philip Rivers might not eat like we don't even know what the future for him holds so they can't that's a huge message in an AFC West that isn't Chargers, yet. Chargers are also trying to sell tickets for a new stadium. You start trading off players for assets and then Good fans point. say, well, Good if you're point. not invested, should Why I? should we? There's a lot of that kind of stuff going on with these teams. I- I'm fascinated to see the next seven hours, how this all goes, mm-hmm. because – I don't anticipate a giant swing, a huge trade happening. And yet, time and time again, we've seen Amari Cooper trade. We've seen Golden Tate. Mm. It does well, happen. I have thought Trent Williams wasn't going to be traded. Why are they doing this now? Yeah, Why now? To me, if you're the Redskins, you're making a point. You're yes. making a point. Is this now suddenly, like with, when you've got no leverage? I don't know if he's going anywhere. I also don't know if he's playing anywhere. You said traded. it, though. Deadlines thing. do things to people. Yes, they do. They spur action. Mm, we'll talk about some of that action a little bit later on in the show. Thanks so much for yeah. our millions of questions. Mike, too.